Hazum, Hazum, it's my Zen moment. Hazum, it's my mantra, Hazum. You look very Zen, very oh. Zen. I've, I've been Zen, I'm just, I'm just, I feel comfortable in Zen today. It's, um, it's so prices keep going up. We've talked about that. I like it, I think it's great. Keep them going. It's like, you want a new car, $10,000, that's not a thing anymore. Let's push the limits, let's see what we can do. <laughs> You know Gas, I mean? let's go for $5, five dollars, five a gallon. <laughs> Insane. <laughs> nice round number. It's already there in certain places in the country. Changing the metric. That's what's um, gonna do it. So we were talking about what kind of guitar brands or amp brands or pedal brands can raise their prices without anyone blinking an eye. No. And we think there's some out there. There are a few. But before we even get into it, the joke is <laughs> Well all of them. <laughs> they all do it. And you can't really do anything about it apparently, but um they're, so they're all raising their prices. We know that. But there's certain like lines that I think have a little bit more leeway with doing it without like ruffling too many feathers. Like I'm angry, I don't want to do that. I'm still gonna click buy and send it to me. Yeah. Unless, or you don't even notice. Yeah, you might not notice. Some like those little tiny, and, and some of them like deservedly do raise their prices. Like I, I, I sort of think that they should in some ways, and because they, they, they haven't in a while. True. Even if their stuff is outrageously expensive, you know. But let's get into the number one. Is probably people don't really bat an eye about Gibson. No. Which is really odd. They've had some. I mean, they don't buy an eye, but I feel like I feel like Gibson has gotten this uh, reputation where they're like sort of priced out of most a lot of average players' hands, anyways. So you don't even like it's one of those things. I feel like a lot of people don't even pay attention to Gibson like custom shop prices. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, that's the because I'm looking at the Gibson custom shop prices, and you know you, you see like oh twelve thousand dollars for a Murphy painting. I mean, what's another hundred fifty bucks? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, you know. It's like I mean, because yeah. No, it is like that's where you could like increment, like because one hundred fifty dollars to, you know, a company. Well, they're only outputting this many of these a year. I'm like, I get it. That's a lot of money, and they could raise that another thousand dollars, and people are still going to buy it. People are still going to buy it. That's a, and that's across the skew of how many pieces he he produces a year. That's still substantial money, you know. Okay. It's maybe not to you and your millions. Yeah, not to me. But um, I think Gibson has, I don't know, there's the trickiest one. They don't, they don't have a carte blanche, but they can kind of do it. Fender, not as easily. You well, know? yeah, no, I mean, I feel like it's already, you know, Fender takes some heat for their cycle, the which Fender, we've talked about that. Yeah, you know. well, Fender's like the, the workman's guitar, you know, too, like the working man's <laughs> instrument, sort of. But it, it, it's strange, though, if you go back to Fender's past, it was not that. Because it was a very expensive guitar adjusted for inflation. Those guitars were over two thousand dollars to get yourself a basic Fender. To start, you know, the Sunburst nineteen fifty four Stratocaster was like a twenty four hundred dollar guitar with inflation adjustment. But what's I mean, it's funny what you said right there. There was no basic Fender. It was a Fender. There Fender was no Stratocaster. like the standard and the Fender, player series Stratocaster. and the blah. Right? <laughs> Would you like a Tele? Would you like a Strat? No. So, but I think like people that watch Fender's prices, like they're more, much more prone to ruffle. Like That's when true. the prices go up, I think um, I think PRS has done some substantial price increases, yep. and I think they can they can sort of wear through that storm not too badly. I think they're allowed to do it in a weird way. What well, no, I think it's just like Gibson, right? There is no. I mean, obviously there's the SCs, but otherwise people don't really think of it like as budget PRS is like PRS is a high end guitar, but Fender because they have such an extensive line, you can get a Fender like at every level. Well, and that that, that PRS though in the middle, like this the CEs and the S two, the, the, the CE in general that that went from you know, two thousand to like twenty three hundred dollars. The the um it's pretty the big Silver jump. Sky is now twenty five fifty. You know that's it's an expensive guitar now. It used to be a lot less, um, and then. Yeah, the S twos are jumping. I think they're. Gonna, I think we're going to see more price ups on those as they go as well. But I think, I think PRS can like sort of jump through it a little bit easier. Now let's get the ones that can definitely raise their prices. Now let's go jump into amps for a minute. I think two rocks. I mean, I think if they raise their prices, people are like okay, cool. They're already like really. Expensive. I mean, they're yeah, yeah. I mean, the, um, it's, it's up there. And but they're also, in my opinion, probably some of the best brand new amplifiers being built today. Yeah. And I think the demand for them is so high, the output is so low, and the the tone is so amazing. Even on amps, I, like I was just playing the TS1 last night for an hour, and I'm still sort of buzzing from that. Yeah. It's True. so good, it's frustrating. I didn't want to like it. I was like, it's just going to be like the Bloomfield, like, you know, sort of gain stage. Minus reverb. Minus reverb. That's what I was thinking. Like, ugh. And I play, I was like, oh, no, do I need one of these? You did, probably. Maybe. Because I have a Bloomfield. I'm like, I mean, do, them I, all. do I need... Uh, it's like Pokemon. 
you know, catch them all. It is sort of thing. like that. That's how I, like, I don't want them to make any more amps because I'm going to have to get those too. Because like, I kind of want a Burnside. I, I definitely want a studio. The classic reverb is amazing. I kind of want that too. It's, people are like, well, if you have a classic reverb, you don't need a studio. I'm like, no, but it does a different thing. It has a slightly different sound. It's <laughs> slightly. Yeah, it's, it's like, but it, and the studio signature is so cute. It's so little and adorable. And only that's your little grab and go amp. My grab and go several thousand dollar <laughs> amplifier. Grab that with your your player well, strat. No, but head. it's so good. It frustrates me. Like I want yeah. each one of them. It is like a Pokemon set. A really, really expensive, a very expensive Pokemon set. It's like a down payment for a house. But I mean, you know, nobody who decides to take the plunge and they want a two rock and they know what a two rock is, they're they're never like, oh god, you know, I I would, but I I hate this price. No, they just that's they, an extra hundred and fifty dollars that it was that wasn't last year. Like I mean, they haven't raised their prices in a while. No. I think they probably should. I hate right. saying that because I hate price increases. I hate it. But I think they're in line for one coming up soon. I think um, King of Tone. Ah, uh, yeah. I think the King of Tone pedals because it's like, we're just going to charge whatever and people will be on our wait list. That's true. I'm on the wait list. You're on the wait list. And eh. I, I think I wouldn't mind if they, because how much is it now? I can't remember what I, I like. Well, I don't know, like 250 two fifty. Really that much? I don't know. I feel like it's three fifty. Right? Every time I, I'm always shocked by how little it is. Yeah, because like, you know, because we hear like the Klon, <laughs> like the magical like four or $5,000 pedal now and... Well, you buy a King of Tone that's, you're not on the waiting list. You're right. Because, like, in my brain, the way to get one is, you know, you, you have to go buy one from someone who has one. How much do they sell for? Like 600 uh, bucks? 600, 700 bucks. You know, yeah. I mean, it's up and down. I, you know, should have looked. But somewhere in that, that range, 600 bucks. And so then when you look, you're know, like, oh, this is two, 300 bucks new. Um, Seems very reasonable. <laughs> what about Novo? Could they raise their prices? They fit in a weird spot. I mean, like, I think they're great guitars. So, like, on the merit of are they great and should they raise their prices? Well, maybe, but I think they live in that weird world where it's like I'm getting this really boutique thing, but it's not six thousand dollars. You know, it's in that it lives in the threes, which, in my guitar sick brain, is very reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh man, it's a steal, you know. Oh, God. Um, but it is, you know, I mean, because. It is. Nash it is. lives in that world to me. Like, oh man, you can get this thing for you know under three k. Yeah, so so I don't know. Yeah, if, so I don't, maybe yeah. they're in a weird sort of. They've got their sort of. Maybe that's their, their, their identity. Their sell through you know? is crushing. Right. The cost to produce is low because they've got the formula sort of dialed in. I okay. mean, when you talk about it, you know, a hundred bucks, maybe sure, yeah, you know, whatever. Because what's a hundred bucks when you're talking about spending over over three thousand bucks on something? But I don't think it could be three, four, five hundred bucks. I think that that is a, looks like a big jump. As you were saying all that, I I. I was laughing, so I was looking, staring, getting lost in your eyes, you're, and thinking about how, like, if you only knew how much this guy like thinks about Beskar armor and like Star Wars mythology, it just doesn't look like someone that would. But like, I do. You do. Anyway, you should go fishing and hunting, which you do as well. I do those but, things. Um, but imagine if I had a Beskar hunting vest. The deer would have no chance. None. Now, the one company that we think could actually um, raise prices is an acoustic guitar company. Nope. They've been around for a long time. They build great guitars. Senor C.F. Martin. Mm. Um, I, I feel like when, when you sit down and play like an HD28, a D28, a, a single lot 18, they haven't changed much at all. They do a few little tweaks. They force shift the bracing, like the little toner change, the neck carves, but it's the same guitar since it was built. They're so good. And right now they're very good. And like we were, you know, that's they're they're so good. It's it's hard for some of the boutique guitar companies to like sort of cut into that market share. Well, when I play you know. a boutique guitar that's double, maybe more, the price of that the D28 that I'm playing here, mm -hmm. that is under three, you know what I mean? Like, seems really, really, really reasonable. It's just hard to... That is really hard. I mean, that's a great guitar. It, it says Martin. It says, it says Martin, Martin on the sounds little great. flat headstock. And they, Martins have a sound. Like, it's they just... Do. You know, and we we did a video on like why dreadnoughts are not like that's not a good first guitar for most people, but when you can step into the, that dreadnought tone, it's and Martin just does it magically. I'm a triple lot. Well, I was guy. gonna say we're the triple lot, or the, we got there's single lots that are magical. That, that we single have lot right eighteen now. It's is good, stupid, yeah, stupid good. Oh. Um, but no, it's I feel like Martin like when they do a price increase, it's not it's not a mind blower. Like they're. Their sort of X series stuff can go up a little bit, and people don't yeah. freak out much because it's not. They haven't done as good a job as identifying their their lower end pieces, their more affordable ones, as Taylor has done. 
Like right. we all like the one fourteens, the two fourteens, the three, you know, well, three's not low anymore or neither's two anymore at this point, but we know sort of like the expectation of price in that range. And, you know, I've, I remember like when we were selling one fourteen CEs for six forty nine. dollars and now it's not that. It's not that anymore. It's, no. it's substantially higher. It's the same exact guitar. I mean, inflation happens, but it's been a high Big inflation. inflation. I mean, that's great. You know, that's everything. That's not just guitars. Do Do you think that? I mean, obviously, just just from a ratio perspective. I'm just thinking about gas. The other day. I, mean, I just thing. don't even. I, 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 I fill my car. Think about don't it. lose your thought. Keep it there. I got I fill my car the other day, and like it got to fifty dollars, and I just stopped. I was like, it's not even filling. I was like, I was just upset. I was like, that's I'm done. Yeah, because it's like I 60, stopped 60, it. dollars to fill up. Yeah. I don't tell me that. I don't want. No, it anyway. is. It is. Continue. So is there a threshold where a price increase doesn't matter anymore? Because I mean, obviously, like you know, if you got a six hundred dollar guitar versus a five thousand dollar guitar, one hundred fifty dollars is a yes. much more you know yes. chunk of that six hundred dollar guitar, right? But like, where's that threshold? I mean, I feel like once you're over, it has to be over the three thousand mark yeah. to really, to where it's really like okay, and it's and like you know, and Fender Custom Shop is sort of tricky. I think we all sort of we watch that so closely. We're so on top of that. Right. There was a price increase, and it was you know it sort of it hit us all too because we we know the price is really well on Fender. I'm still getting like, okay. Like, oh, okay, this is this much. So now. That's how much yeah. that costs now. <laughs> it's like right. the price of fish just went up a little bit, and some. Um, yeah. It, it's it's tough. Like I didn't I didn't enjoy that necessarily, yeah. but yeah, if, and those are all in that over three thousand dollar range. There's no sub three thousand dollar Fender Custom Shop that doesn't exist anymore. No, it's um. That's a thing well past. I mean, there's there's really no sub four thousand dollars. There's a few. I was gonna get one, thirty thirty five, thirty seven. Cool. You can find some of them Used, pre-owned yeah. for, for sure, yeah. like uh, in that in that range still. And my, and then Guitar Center had a bunch that they were blowing out recently. They right. did like they did this order on this like same run, and there's they're dumping them right now. Actually, it, 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 they're all right. You know, I played the, that one, that model that they're sort of dumping. Some yeah. some are they're still Fender Custom Shops, are great, but like you know, it's right. just, they stripped some stuff, I think. To make it, and then and they're just trying to recoup on their investment that they can't move because they don't sell custom shops that well. True. Because they don't have guys that know about them that are trying to sell them all the time, unfortunately. So yeah, I think it's in that above three hundred three thousand dollars. I think right that's range. that's probably right where I would. And I think once you're in that it. you know sort of amplifier range too, it is it's the same world. Like if when you're in that above three thousand dollar, in pedals when you're above three thousand dollars, you're buying clones. <laughs> so it doesn't uh, matter. Pedals. I mean, you can't get it. If you get a clone for 3K now, it's like you got to steal. That's like a that's a hundred percent steal. Or one of insane. one of the guys I work with, and he's he he did this is funny. This is a side story, but he bought. Um, no, he he's a wonderful guy. He lives in Nashville, Tennessee. I love him. I'm not saying names. I don't I don't do that in general. But he um he sold a pedal to the fella, a KTR pedal, I believe. Okay. And this guy got it. And he's like, this isn't right. I took it apart. He's like, it's not right. There's like cotton swabs and things that I don't like on it. And so this this fella, he he went and contacted the guy who built the pedal. Right. He's like, did you build this pedal? He's like, I built this pedal. These are the components I use on that because of this and this and this. And he's like, because the guy was trying to get his money back. He was having, he was having buyer's remorse. Right, right. This dude that bought it, obviously, but he was just trying to make him play. I'm like, I've never taken apart <laughs> one of my pedals to look at oh, all the God, components no. either. Maybe I need to. <clears throat> and I don't think I would, yeah. I would be like, okay, cool. Looks like a pedal. Bunch of wires. That's <laughs> just awesome. I don't know. College kids, man. Who knows? College kids with too much Whatever. money on their hands, yeah. maybe. You shouldn't be spending seven hundred dollars on a pedal. I'm just I don't know if it's a college kid, I'm just guessing. I will say that since I've started spending like three, four thousand dollars on amps, I'm totally cured of my pedal bikes. <laughs> See, I told you. It's weird. It is. I, I have the best pedal rig, it's just like ten thousand dollars worth of amplifiers. God Easy. help me. If only no, I'd known. I mean, if I if only ten thousand dollars worth of amps is what I had to, that'd be sweet. I'm just talking about for my live rig. Oh. I hate my life. It's twenty seven blues juniors all chained together. That's Dude, what he's talking about. Are so good though. God, we talked about it the other day. Like when you that one dimed out. Oh my god, it's so good. But no, if I could have my 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 Bloomfield and my TS one, that's what I need to have right now. Would you do your Bloomfield in the TS one or would you do like you know, something that didn't have like a Something that wasn't a two rock? No. No, not not no. Definitely a two rock, like a sterling. Sterling. Maybe like sterling a, and a TS one is like that's <clears> probably the best pairing. Now, if I Man. if I had like all the money in the world and like and do my as far as and I was gonna buy two two rocks to be my like my two rock rig TS one and Sterling. That is that's my only problem with the Twilighter and the Magneton or the M eighty is that I kind of want them both. <laughs> like I want to switch from my Twilighter clean, 
to my like dirty high gain. But even like the clean on the M80 <laughs> is so cool. It is, it is cool. It's like what I want a Marshall to sound but like. But it's, it's not the other no, thing. No, it's not that. Do you know what I mean? It's like you want them all. You that's want them like, all. Because like that's... That's like the Al Green, you know, like the like the brown, the Twilight. It's like that milky, like yeah, come come to my bedroom, let's make love. Take off your blouse, <laughs> blouse. Yes, um, that's what I feel like. Always take off your blouse. That's all I think I have to share this day. We should have told you to click subscribe and hit the bell and all that stuff in the beginning we of the video. Forgot. We keep forgetting to do that. Losers. Apparently, we're supposed to do that. That's why we're we, mad at this. We're told this all the time. <laughs> so go back and rewatch this video and click subscribe in the beginning. At the beginning, it's like a time warp, a time loop. You're just like uh, Doctor Strange. Don't, don't like, talk too much about it because I haven't seen the latest Spider Man. I haven't seen that. Yeah, no, me neither. I haven't why, seen like, why have we not seen that? Because it's, watch it's it not together. on any streaming services. I know. But if you haven't seen the Elvis trailer, it just dropped. It looks amazing for the new Elvis movie. I hope it's not a flop. Tom Hanks plays the Colonel. No. Yeah, and Elvis nails it. And they, they got the music right, they got the looks right. Um, yeah, I hope it's good. It looks amazing. How amazing would it be? This is dumb. I'm just going to throw it out of there. What if Elvis really was alive? And then at the end of a movie like that is when he announced it to the world. There was real Elvis. Old man. That, that just made me sad because like, I wish to God that would happen. I because like, I, just, I, couldn't, I couldn't stay on the fame. I had to, had to step back. And I've been How a, amazing I've, would that be? I've been a pot farmer in New Jersey for the past 30 years. I'm just saying. Thank you very much. I mean, God, it's been like 45 years. I'm sorry. Fan theories. For the past 45 years, he's been a pot farmer in New Jersey. Yeah. God, he'd be really old now. And he would be really old now. But he nope. is truly king. I love Elvis Presley. I love all his music. And I don't even hate all his corny movies. Yes. I do hate Colonel. That's it. See you guys later. <laughs> Goodbye.